<clears throat> you guys able to see chapter five at my back, right? Oh, yes, sir. All right. So, um, so in chapter five, um, according to your um, module uh, description, uh, chapter five is general corrosion. So uh, you look at atmosphere governing uh, straight current, biological molten salt. But uh, I think it's, it's quite a big chapter. So I, for our module this semester, I focus on governing corrosion. Okay, it itself is a, is a big uh, chapter. So today we will focus on governing uh, corrosion in chapter five, All right? Then after we conclude chapter five for governing corrosion, we will move on to chapter six. Okay, <clears throat> let's watch a video. So this video is talk about a uh, 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 mixing of uh, copper and zinc, right? Copper and zinc, just a simple experiment. Um, and uh, this chapter five, we talk about um, uh, galvanic corrosion, which is uh, exchange of uh, electron uh, without additional. Again, corrosion is something happen without external electricity. So it's an exchange of electron uh, between to body. So um, galvanic corrosion is a little bit different from the previous corrosion we look at. Galvanic corrosion, you need two metals and a bridge, we call it a, a bridge, uh, which is a, you need a solution that connect two metals together. So the condition for metals, both metals is inside a solution both metal is inside the solution and it need a bridge for or there's a transfer of uh, electron in the process so it's a little bit special um, and you can see that uh, there's a similarity in the aquarius corrosion but this one is more on between what happened between two uh, metals okay so this video is going to take about five minutes so just uh, enjoy and recall what you learned in your previous uh, chemistry class. Right. Okay, so what we see here is a voltaic cell. Um, this is a standard copper zinc voltaic cell. And I'm just going to walk through each part of this cell so that we can understand what's happening. So in the left beaker here, we have a solution of copper 2 sulfate. Um, that's what the blue color is. It's from the copper 2 plus ions. Uh, inside of that solution, immersed in it, we have a copper electrode. So that's just a piece of solid copper, um, and it's just alligator clipped to a wire. Uh, between the two beakers, we have something called a salt bridge. So this is filled with sodium sulfate, and the little cotton plugs on the end there are just to keep the solution in. So this provides us ion flow between the two beakers. On the right here, we have a beaker containing a zinc sulfate solution uh, with a solid zinc electrode. And you can see that there's actually a reaction taking place on that zinc. That's what that darker color is, where it was in the solution. Uh, and so we're going to walk through what's happening in this reaction um, in terms of electron flow, ion flow, oxidation, etc. So uh, in a voltaic cell, we have a spontaneous reaction. That means that this reaction does not require any external energy. In fact, it's producing electrical energy. So this is a voltmeter and it tells me that I'm getting about 1.1 volts out of this reaction. And so what is happening is I have my strongest reducing agent, which is zinc, and my strongest oxidizing agent, which is copper two plus. So my strongest reducing agent, zinc, is going to undergo oxidation at the anode. So at my anode, I'm going to have solid zinc oxidized to zinc 2 plus. Um, and at my cathode, which is the solid copper electrode, I'm going to have copper 2 plus ions reduced to solid copper. back so you can see 
Um, so what we're going to see over time as this cell operates is we're going to see this zinc get become oxidized. And that's what we're seeing with that black color on the electrode. So the oxidation is actually going to decrease the mass of our zinc electrode and it's going to eventually dissolve away. The electrons that are produced during this oxidation reaction are going to move through the wire. It's not a very visible marker. Are going to move through the wire to the cathode. So my electrons leave my zinc solid and I produce zinc 2 plus in this solution. The electrons travel through these wires through my voltmeter and then into my cathode. Once they're in the cathode, they're able to meet up with copper 2 plus ions in the solution and then form solid copper. So what we should see over time here is the color of this solution should get lighter and the mass of my copper electrode should increase. Now that's going to be a little bit hard to see um, on an already copper electrode. But we can make a small adjustment to this reaction uh, and maintain a working cell. So if we look at our two half reactions, we'll see that the solid copper is actually not a reactant, it's a product. And so this electrode is merely here to deliver electrons. It's not actually involved in the reaction. So I can take this solid piece of carbon. Carbon is actually quite uh, conductive in its solid form. I can take this solid piece of carbon and I can uh, replace the copper electrode with it. So I'm going to pull out this copper electrode. I'm going to squeeze this carbon electrode into my solution. And we see that we still have voltage moving through this cell because we haven't actually changed the reaction that's taking place. We still have copper ions being reduced at the cathode uh, and zinc, zinc uh, metal being oxidized at the anode. The only difference is that over time as this reaction occurs, I should see some plating of copper onto this carbon electrode. So over time, that should develop kind of a copper colored sheen as copper solid or solid copper um, is plated onto it. Okay. <clears throat> so from the video, um, you can watch this video over and over again. Um, basically, uh, when we talk about galvanic corrosion, we talk about cell, right? We talk about cell, or you can take it as a concept of battery. Um, what I mean by cell? Cell means uh, entity that have an exchange of electron in the system. This is called cell. <clears throat> so the, inside this cell, you have two medium, which is half of it is copper sulfate or sodium, uh, copper solution here, uh, blue color. And you have another cell. It is having a zinc and a zinc solution here. So this is called cell. And you break into half through the bridge here. We call it half cell. So this is half cell. This is half cell. Uh, half uh, means you chop the reaction into half. And just now in the video, you saw that uh, this teacher here or this uh, instructor here um, he writes some equation on the table here. There are two equations. So that equation that we learned already in uh, chapter one, when we talk about oxidation, we talk about um, the exchange of, uh, we talk about anodic reaction, catholic reaction. So just now the, uh, the instructor write <clears throat> about zinc. Zinc will contribute, will throw two electrons to the copper through the wire. Okay, so there's a breakdown of zinc. Okay, there's a breakdown of zinc from a solid metals into charge. All right. So when you break the solid into charge, you reduce the mass of the means that there's a destruction of the structure. So that is also go back to the chapter one definition. What is corrosion? Since our first class, yeah, our first lecture. Uh, we define what is corrosion. So when the solid zinc break away, become charges, means become zinc charges and throw away 
electron. So you will, you will see that the zinc is will reduce this sample here. Zinc, the weight or the mass will drop because of the uh, dissolution of zinc uh, charges. Where does the zinc charges go? It will go into the solution here. The charges will go into the zinc charges, uh, positive charges will, will, will go into this solution. And uh, in the chemistry, you know that how we measure concentration, it is uh, we measure concentration through mole or molar. All right. So if you don't understand what is molar, uh, one mole equal to six something times 10 power 23 uh, molecule. Uh, so that one you need to go back to chemistry class. But anyway, what is important, you understand the mechanism, what is happened in the uh, galvanic cell. Right? So this one uh, will break into charges and the electron was transferred through a medium, through a connection. Right? In here we use wire. It can be, it can through any, any medium. Eh? You can through any medium as long as there's a contact. Sorry, as long as there's an electrical contact. I use the word I stress on electrical contact. Huh? So as long as uh, it's not necessary, you need to use wire. Um, any conducting medium also can, as long as the electron can transfer to another metals. Okay, so I already explained half cell for zinc what about the copper right what about the copper so just now also the instruction write some equation on the table on the this area here so what happened to the copper so um, actually the the metal here it doesn't matter right it doesn't matter what is important is the solution the charges in the solution here here you have a copper so uh, so4 CuSO4. So what is important is this solution. Um, again, just, just now in a video, this that's why you see the in a video, this instructor changed the rod here. Uh, change the rod here. So it doesn't change the voltage just now, right? In the video, even though it changed the copper into carbon uh block, right, into carbon rod, you change the different medium, the voltages doesn't change. So uh, what is important is the solution charge here, uh, copper. So what happened to the electron that donate by the neighbor over here? So the charges to electron will go into this solution through this medium, all right, through this medium, uh, through this uh, rod or through these metals. It will combine with the charges in the solution here. So in this solution, you have copper charges, right? Copper positive charge and SO4 negative. But negative is good friend with positive charge. So the two negative will go and find his friend, the two, two electron here, go and find his positive friend. So the Cu2 positive will combine with two electron. So when charges, a positive charge combined with negative charge, it become a solid metal, it become precipitation or it become a powder form. So where does this power form will do? It will stick to the surface of it because the power need, need something to stick on or to stay on, right? So uh, this is the rod that having the electron, right? So where, where does the electron uh, most uh, highest concentration or we call it, uh, where can you find the electron? either on the rod or on the solution is on the rod, right? Because the electron transfer to the rod here. Uh, so the, 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 the highest uh, negative charge is on this body here or on the surface of this uh, surface here. So the Cu2 positive will combine with the electron that sent through the neighbor here. So the electron is appeared on the surface of this object, right? The electron do not jump into the solution. Eh? The electron do not jump into the solution. If not, then uh, you have you see some crazy stuff happen, right? That is not how electron works. Electron only can transfer through a conductor 
and then remain in the conductor. So that is how electron move. Huh? So electron cannot jump from medium to another medium. If not, then uh, it's a very uh, dangerous, or we call it high power electron, uh, high power voltage. So that one happened in the el uh, electronics or electrical subject already. Okay, but this one we talk about corrosion. Corrosion is very very low vol uh, volume, uh, a very very low voltage. Okay, so uh, the copper will stick to the medium here. Right, the, the surface here. Okay, so as long as you understand what happened to this video, um, later on, you just need to change the medium on the left hand side, oh, sorry, on the right hand side here, with other metals, and you change something to the solution or on the medium over here. Okay, now you, uh, again, uh, so yeah, in the, this video, you know that what actually happened to the process is that this zinc throw electron, so this zinc will reduce mass, and the electron will transfer here. Nothing deal, deal with this rod here, although here is copper, but you change to any conducting medium the process still have a voltage still same. So what is important for the two electron that transfer over here, that travel from here, go and find a good friend. Where is the two electron good friend? Is inside this solution. The, the positive charge in, uh, inside the solution here, not on the solid rod here. And where does the meeting, the, the, the gathering happen between the positive charge and the negative charge is on the surface of the conducting rod because the electron cannot cannot swim into the solution here, right? Electron it, it, it stay on the conducting surface. So uh, when they meet up, the electron from here, they meet up with the positive charge, then they form solid uh, metals, okay? So I hope you get the idea um, how um, galvanic cell, we call it galvanic cell. Huh? This is galvanic cell. So how galvanic cell happen? In later session, we will look at calculation on this process. Okay. So, but before we go into the uh, uh, calculation, um, Make sure you understand this video and what happened between the metals. Okay, the name of the metal doesn't matter, but as long as you understand the the mechanism, uh, how electron transfer, and so on. Yeah. Okay. Any question about this video? Any question? Good. Yeah. All right. So anyway, you have any question? You just can go to this uh, link. Uh, and or you can go to uh, YouTube, search this title, right? Chemistry 30, uh, standard zinc copper voltage cell uh, with salt bridge. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I hope our chemistry department they have this. Sir. Then uh, when you come back to campus, um, I can show you. Uh, I can ask the lecturer from the uh, chemistry uh, department to show you what is the galvanic cell. Right. All right. Let's move on. Okay. <clears throat> right. You need to start filling some 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 uh, some space in your tutorial handouts, yeah, so they can follow along. Um, you have a uh, quite a heavy of uh, what call it information here, right? So, I, but I will go very slowly, yeah. So, what is galvanic corrosion? Galvanic corrosion. You need two metals, two or more, huh? two or more, but minimum two, um, that having different nobility, different nobility. Uh, uh, later I'll explain about nobility. And they are electrically connected. That's why you see a wire uh, connecting the zinc and copper in the video just now. Uh, technical word, they must electrically connected. Yeah? 
physical connected, but if the electron cannot transfer, galvanic corrosion do not happen. Yeah. Okay. The keyword here is electrical connected, and emerge, and emerge, in the same environment, meaning both of the metals, it must expose to the same environment setup. Okay. Same environment here means they must be in the water. Okay, they must be in the water and they must be electron must able to transfer between these two metals. There must be a transfer of electron electrically connected between two metals, both submerged in the same environment. Okay. <clears throat> so this are some of the um, samples where you see on galvanic corrosion, especially when they are in the marine environment or exposed to seawater. We know seawater is an electrolyte or is a elect is a solution with a positive charge and negative charge, right? So you have done this experiment before in your chemistry class, right? In your secondary school, um, you generate a simple cell or simple battery with salt, right? With salt, and even with a lime, uh, with a lime, um, with a, uh, with a organic fruit, uh, then you generate uh, some voltage there. Okay. Um, before I move on, just now, still back to the video. Just now, the video, the instructor measure. Uh, the potential between two uh, two uh, two metals with a voltmeter, right? So what is the voltmeter means? It means potential. There's an imbalance of electricity inside the system, so they use voltage, right? So uh, that is a, a fundamental concept for that one. Yeah. Okay. Now we go to the nobility concept first. Yeah. Now, nobility means there's a level of priority. Level of priority um, when it comes to corrosion, right? Level of nobility means the level to choose which one will be sacrificed when it comes to corrosion or uh, which one will give electron, okay? So, when you talk about novel, we talk about a level of priority. So, nobility, if two metals have the same nobility, nothing will happen. Right? So, let's say you have two metals here. So, one on my this side, this one on my this side. So, you have two metals. Both of them are in the same level. Okay? They are same level. Alright? So, same level, nothing will happen. Okay, nothing will happen. Uh, it's like playing, uh, playing uh, uh, games here, right? Playing games here, you have your level, right? When you play, um, play games, there you have a uh, different XP. The higher, the higher level you go, uh, the higher XP you have, right? In the in the uh, in the video games, the uh, uh, computer games that you play, right? So if you have the same level or same nobility, nothing will happen, right? So what happens if the nobility change? Okay. Nobility change. So this one is higher nobility. This one is lower nobility. So I believe all of you, you are playing games, right? I'm not sure if you're playing some, um, some CS, all right? Some Counter-Strike game or you're, use, uh, you're playing with uh, Dota or something, right? So um, the higher XP or higher level you go, the more destroy, uh, the more um, damage you can done, right? So uh, let's say you have higher nobility and lower nobility metals. So what happened to the lower nobility? So the higher, uh, the lower nobility will destroy itself, will, will sacrifice its, lower nobility will sacrifice electron to the higher nobilities metals okay now you try to imagine the nobility the level huh? so those in the high level 
they are the one who accept electron from the lower one. It's like the kingship, a uh, kingdom ship, the, the kingdom in the old society. Those uh, king and those lower level in a society, what they do, they will donate money or they will give money through tax to the king, right? So it will do the same, use the same, same concept, higher nobility and lower nobility. Lower nobility will contribute electron to higher nobility, but they must be connected electrically. Then only the electron can transfer from low nobility to high nobility. Okay, so it, it always happens like that, no matter uh, where, which medium you go. Huh? We, no, we talk about transfer of electron. Transfer electron works in one direction only, which is lower nobility, uh, lower nobility metals will always transfer electron to high nobility metals. Okay, so just now in the video, you have two metals, right? So we have two metals. If there is no nobility or same nobility, the vote meter in the video will read zero vote because no exchange of electron. So zero vote means balance. There's no exchange of voltage. If they, of course, practical they is, la, they will be changing of electron once you connected. But the voltage, the potential will be very, very small if you have the same level of uh, nobility, right? Again, in, back to your uh, computer game, right? Same level of character if you're in the uh, fighting mode, right? Fighting mode, you have the same level. Basically, the level of damage will almost the same, right? So. Then in the video, the zinc contribute electron. Zinc contribute electron, right? So the electron pass through the wire. So from the video itself, you know which one is higher, which one is lower, right? You have copper and you have zinc inside there. Right? You have zinc element and copper element there. So in the cell, or we call it half cell or process, you already know which one is higher, which one is lower by looking at who contribute electron. Okay, again, uh, those higher and those lower, right, no matter how I flip my, uh, my, 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 my hands here. So those in the high nobility and those in low high nobility, low nobility always contribute electron to high nobility metals. So in the video, Zinc contribute electron to the copper side, right? So zinc from the video or from the observation, you know that zinc is lower nobility compared to copper. Okay, this is how you understand half cell, how you understand governing solution. Yeah? So this is just an explain textbook explanation. So less noble metals. What happened to the less noble the metals? Uh, less noble metals, they will experience a corrosion rate. Meaning in the zinc just now, zinc will contribute electron to uh, high nobility metals. So what happened when it, it is uh, contribute electron? It become from solid to electric electric charge two positive uh, zinc two positive. All right, so. The zinc will break down, will break down into charges. So the mass of the zinc rod will reduce. So that will cause will cause corrosion increase in the low nobility members. Okay, now as long as you get this idea, this chapter will be very, very easy for you. If you don't get that idea, that concept that I explained five minutes ago, you're going to struggle in this uh, uh, chapter because you don't understand how it works. Once you don't know how it works and then you are loaded with a loss of equation, you will confuse. You don't know which numbers value to use later. 
Okay, so uh, let's ask ourselves a few short questions up to these slides. Are you able to explain what is governing cell using the video I show you just now, using zinc and copper both deep in the solution with the bridge? Are you able to explain how the exchange of electron happen? That's the first question. Huh? Do you understand how the electrons transferred in the governing cell? And then the second question is about nobility. When you have a high nobility and low nobility, what happened to the low nobility when it meet with the higher nobility metals? What happened to this lower member, lower nobility members? Okay, so it will con the lower one will contribute negative charges to the no no higher noble metals here. When it contributes, it sacrifice itself and it becomes charges. So this this one we call it uh, the one that the one that experiencing the corrosion. The lower number one, this one will experience corrosion. So this is the one that we focus on in this chapter. Okay, the lower one that contribute electron and sacrifice itself. So this lower nobility is the one that we focus on. Okay, so those in less level, lower level, they will contribute to the corrosion rate. Eh? And back to the co uh, nobility, the more difference in your level, Okay, the more further distance of nobility between these metals and these metals, this one is in high, this one is low, the differences of level as you drag the distance between the nobility, the voltage that you measure will be increasing. The voltage that you increase, this one is zero volt, and you change the metal based on nobility, the voltage will increase in the voltmeter. This one zero, positive volt, and more and more value in the voltmeter. This is called potential uh, potential uh, difference between two metals. Huh? So the gap between this thing, this hand and this hand, the height between these two, we call it potential. Huh? Later you look at that, this technical word potential. So uh, the concept is. What happens if you increase the nobility, the nobility difference between two metals? You're going to change the potential. And the, the, the further these two members, these two levels, the electron exchange will be more serious or more uh, faster. Okay? So if you want to have very fast, Corrosion, uh, governing corrosion. You use less level. You you in the medium or in the system, you have two very very uh, big difference in their nobilities. You have metal A, metal B, and their potential is very very large. Then corrosion rate you can observe in the naked eyes. Okay. But normally in the industry, we want to protect our products. We want to protect our products. So we try to have insulation. We try to protect our devices by reducing the governing corrosion. Right? Either you cut off the, the transfer of electron. Right? Now, once you understand the principle, you know how to stop governing corrosion already. One, how you stop corrosion, you, you cut the, the connection between the two body, the wire, you cut away the wire or the electrically connected mechanism. You cut the, the, the highway or the, the, the road that allowed the transfer electron, you cut the, the, the medium. So there's no transfer electron, then galvanic corrosion will stop. Okay. Or you put in another metals. Let's say you have two metals, right? Let's say you have two metal A and B, and you want to protect B. You want to protect B. What do you do? You you import you import the third party. You import the third party 
which is lower level than the metals that you want to protect. You import third element that is lower than these two. Third party lower. What happened in the process? The corrosion will focus on the highest and the lowest. So nothing still will happen, uh, in the middle still will happen, but the corrosion, galvanic corrosion will focus on the lowest level nobility and the highest nobility first. Then once this one finish, then it will come back to another lower level of medium. Now once you get this idea, you, 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 you get this idea correctly, you can do calculation later. Huh? So we, we talk with uh, nobility. Yeah? Okay, nobility will affect what? Nobility will affect the corrosion rate. Okay, later we have calculation for corrosion rate. Huh? So it will affect the corrosion rate. Next, we move on. In your tutorial handouts, I give you a table. That table is a very long list, all right? So just now we talk about one word called potential. In the calculation later, we will not use, we will use E, uh, E superscript zero, mean, uh, what I mean by superscript zero it means standard potential, means in the standard case, in the standard experiment, you will get the same value of potential. Again, what is potential? It's the difference between uh, high nobility metals and another metals, the differences between these two, right? The differences of the transfer of electron between these two metals, right? Standard potential in the unit of volt. Um, yeah, so later you'll see potential, huh? standard potential, zero. Um, and sometimes in the question for chapter five, you will ask to um, uh, estimate the reduction reaction. Okay, so reduction reaction, uh, reduction reaction means what? The process of the the differences between two medium, the the potential, All right? So the 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 higher the nobility, the more corrosion rate will happen, All right? So the more corrosion means more reduction reaction will happen. Right? Zinc will destroy itself, become positive charge. So that is one of the reduction reaction. So um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so in the table that you see in your handouts, you will see positive charges and negative charges. So those value with positive charges will have higher nobility. Now, nobility here is not fixed. Huh? Uh, not, 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 uh, sorry. Uh, nobility here is just a location or it's just a level between two, two metals. Okay, between two metals. So this is an example of the table you see. So in the table, you will see electrode reaction. Like what happened? Right, electrode reaction. So you will see this one plus E means what in the, the one that receive, right? The one that receive electron. Okay. So there are two medium here. One receive electron, one give electron. So by give by looking at the mechanism of giving and receiving, you can estimate the nobility in the governing cell. All right. So you have two character here. One receiving electron, one giving electron. Lower level nobility always give electron. Okay, higher nobility always receive electron. So in this table, for example, you you when you see the positive plus electron one, you will see there's a positive potential. Okay, positive potential, what does it mean? It means it stays at the higher level in the in the metals community. Okay, if you have positive charge, means it stays at a higher level. Okay, 
This one also same. Huh? So here you have a negative charge. Negative charge is mean it's still receiving, but it's, it's in the lower nobility compared to the positive charge here. So you have two set of data here. One with a positive charge, one with a negative charge. So if you have two metal, let's say this one, first item and second item here, one is positive charge, one is negative charge. If you combine, you connect these two metal together, can you see the nobility level? Which one on the top, which one on the bottom? If you take this one and this one, can you imagine? Right. Let's say we, we, we don't, you don't need to look at the chemical, uh, chemical uh, presentation here. You just look at the name and the voltages or the potential. You already know which one stay on the top, which one stay at the bottom. If I take the positive charge, uh, positive potential vote here, positive 0.534 and negative 0.121. Negative one always below, positive one always above. Now what happened if I pick these two? Okay, I pick these two member. You have positive 5.34 and positive 522. Which one lower? Second one lower, right? So what is the ranking in the nobility? Lower number always below, higher number always above. So if you combine these two metal in the solution, in a galvanic cell, in a solution, where electrically connected, so higher, lower potential, the lower one always contribute, so lower will become the sacrifice medium. This one, the lower one, once it is contribute electron, it will sacrifice itself, become electron charge. I hope you see the, the uh, you understand the concept here. Right, by looking at the numbers, you understand, oh, what is galvanic corrosion? Or at least you know how to how to park the ranking, right? How to do the ranking in nobility. Uh, once you have the nobility, under, you understand nobility, uh, you should be, have no problem after this. Right? Another table, this is another long list that you, you find. Uh, this actually is continuous from this one, huh? Okay, so this is a long list. So you have uh, ferrum, oxide, and so on. Okay, so you have this fair level. So what, what is the usefulness, uh, what is the use of uh, this table in your test or your final exam? You will see this one in appendix uh, or in your reference uh, material behind your uh, Test question. I will give you one table, something like that, and ask you to do analysis on galvanic reaction. All right? This is the first table you look at when you talk about galvanic cell or galvanic corrosion. Because the first step you build equation is to understand the nobility between two metals. Which one on the top? Which one at the bottom? Once you understand the ranking you will derive equation for the top component and lower component. Okay, this is the first very important steps, right? We talk about ranking, nobility. The first question will ask you, uh, when it comes to chapter five, first session will ask you, which one have a higher nobility? I give you medium A, medium B, or object A, object B, or element A, element B. Uh, something from this table, Right, something from this table. Uh, for example, I pick lah. I pick. Uh, maybe this is too small for your for your screen. So maybe I pick these two members here, right? I and copper. And I ask you in a question. I, I ask you to calculate something. But first session A, I will ask you to explain the nobility between element A and element B. Which one have a higher nobility? Which one have a low, lower nobility? Okay. You explain using potential value, standard potential value. And then you sketch, you sketch the schematic diagram of 
which one is higher, which one lower, and then electron direction, exchange direction, yeah? Okay. So this one also explained, uh, just a put remark there. The more positive it is, the higher of the nobility. And you have seen this one before when you talk about, uh, when we introduce you about carbonic uh, corrosion in chapter one. So same, we go back to this uh, uh, summary of uh, how galvanic corrosion can happen. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have eight factor that you need to consider in this chapter, okay? Especially this one, okay? Geometry, huh? So you can read from the slide. So we'll go one by one, all right? Okay. Again, still go back to what is galvanic cell? What is galvanic corrosion? You need two metals or more two or more, two metals, electrically connected in this one, electric connected through the solution, okay, in the same environment. And then metal A, metal B, how the corrosion happened, start, first step is to look at nobility. Where, how do you know nobility? Refer to table that I just showed you. Look at potential value, those have more positive one become higher and then another one become lower. Okay, that is how you start answering the question for chapter five. Okay, we have a short break over here. Let me stop the recording.